just checking that I am at 1.12 and I am. Start off the explosion team as always. be fully free. There's nothing else to fit. That's Metagross 1. It's a rough opening duo. At least Gengar can Destiny Bond. I might have to Destiny Bomb before Bonzong is out. The problem is that Zapdos versus Bonzong is not a foregone conclusion. And Heatproof is the wrong ability that I would want. It is possible to have Metagross faint. Gengar but fail. I can protect Gengar on turn one. And then on turn two I can Destiny Bond with a Focus Sash. And Bronzong will get the KO as long as Zen Headbutt doesn't miss. Issue is both Zen Headbutts have to hit for the Bronzong to fake to that, otherwise it would be Metagross. could just have a Zelf attempt to flamethrower down the Bonzong, but it would take too many shots, I think. Normally in this situation I'd be able to flamethrower down Metagross, but I can't leave Fortress alone. Going to behave randomly. I would have to lumberry both Pokemon. Gengar would protect on turn one. And if I'm lumberrying Gengar, then I'm not protected against Bronzong's Quick Claw. It's just, it's bright powder is the most annoying thing about this because I can't fling the Metagross. Ah, I know what I should do. I flame or fling the bronze on. Destiny bond down the Gengar. Azelf and Bronzer will both be burned, but that's okay. I can definitely do that. And through doing that, I can definitely raise the levels of the first two. The fact that itself burns itself doesn't matter. I'll leave Bronzo at 50. Out of respect for Quick Claw, maybe. I can definitely raise it though. I can definitely raise Bronzo.
In fact, it might be better. It might guarantee that it sees the KO with Iron Head after Zen Head but and the burn damage from herself. There's a chance that Bonzong quick claws Gengar, I guess, on turn two. So I have to Destiny Bond on turn one. Which is fine. That was also a problem. I'm in trouble a little bit if Quick Claw activates after that miss. But Destiny Bond is active at least. Bronzong would faint. Actually, if Quick Claw activates, then I fling Metagross and I win anyway, don't I? And five is maybe Iron Head range. Six percent ish. I feel I can keep herself alive. Turn sighting. This means it's a set two trainer, an NFE tier two. Or not. Wait, this is Cactus, isn't it? I'm gonna have to spend more then. I think that's guaranteed to be Tentacle 2, but I'm not sure. I do want to be sure that is Tentacle 2. I might be able to save a point here, but it's a lot cheaper to not worry about that. Yeah, I could have saved I could have saved a point there. Won't worry about it. Definitely think I just blow up.
probably would rather use up Explosion than Destiny Bond on Gengar, Little Sharpedo, which is fine, I can afford to do that. Always Hammer Arm or Mega Horn from my period. It doesn't matter which order I explode in. This is always fainting, and so is Flareon. Could Patea Berry Shadow Ball and protect. And if Rhyperia guesses wrong on the 50 50, then it's a very easy win. If it guesses correct, then the Zelf has to explode. And it's a flurry on Zapdos 1v1. I don't really want to play that out. I feel like Bite might break a Zapdos's sub. Alternatively, I just need a very obvious Protect Destiny Bond. It's only bad if Megahorn misses. Whereas if Sing hits, that's annoying. I could equip a Chesto Berry and fish for a free win with um, the turn one Destiny Bond Protect. And then if it doesn't work, turn two can be Explosion. I feel like, the thing is, I feel like I can get Rhyperia with the Patea Berry. I'm not sure if I can get it at 55 though. That's deep. I'm not sure about that. Probably leave it at 50 and Patea Berry it.
should probably push this more, but I don't need to. Like, I could definitely just light to yourself. Could Destiny Bond too. I feel like Explosion is less valuable on PB. <laughs> Immediate damp, and it's polyrath. Polyrath might have to be a Zelf bait. <sighs> the quick claw combination. That's bad. That's really bad. So it has to be Gengar bait, but the Zelf can't take out Polyrath. I might be able to play this game out though because of Zapdos, Thunderbolt. Another damp Pokemon in the back is probably it. the Wakanberry. The Quick Claw ruins the chance I had of winning this. I could fully heal both. Azelf and Gengar. I could focus Sash the Gengar. And probably Specs Gengar. No, no, I can't focus Sash and uh, I can't Specs Azelf. So Azelf would be, it would be Fling Shadow Ball instead of Sloki on turn one. Gengar would then Destiny Bond something. Probably Golda. Honestly, then I kind of win if I do that. It all looks good apart from the Blizzard Freeze potential from Polyrath. I don't know if I can risk that. Because I can't equip a Lumberry.
think the freeze chance is too much. I could drop Polyrath's level and choice specs Gengar, but then I'm not equipping a focus sash on Gengar and I can be quick clawed down, so I think I have to skip. I don't think that was actually a clash with um, <laughs> the Typhlosion, actually. There is no um, white powder Typhlosion, but whatever. Well, as Zelf explodes, Gengar covers the level 55 Gliscor with Shadow Ball. And then I Destiny Bond, right? go wrong. I don't level up Charizard because it's timid. Apart from that, I think it's all good. Because this should be 177. This game's quite simple, I need to go on mute quickly. This one looks fixable. I just have to deal with Weavile via Slackberry. 
The wall rain is annoying, but I have precious Zapdo, so I win. Glaceon might survive this. Okay. Ending that match quickly is worth the castle point gain from using less PP. It is, isn't it? Weird. If Powered on 3 and Kingler 2. I'm trying to think of a trainer that meets those. Must be a PI. I didn't. Yeah, it must be a PI. Sandstorm is annoying, but I can just heal Gengar with a citrus berry. Which is what I think I have to do. So Gengar has to use Destiny Bond on turn one in case Don Fan quick claws it. I feel like a Zelf would never miss the KO into Hip on with a single target explosion. I guess if I'm too wide I can just give it a lychee and then I can 
beast and base up. Yeah. Normally I would cover whip with the shadow ball, but I can't this game. I've got a destiny bond. I think I'm safe at 157 with Zapdos, but if I level up the Don Fan, I'm probably not safe anymore. So I'm going to leave Don Fan because Zapdos is injured. Just double check that I've got that right. Lychee Berry, Citrus Berry. Yeah. Okay, Power Don can come up. They'll both fake to the Yourself Explosion. And Dawn Fan is guaranteed to go after the low health Gengar. And Gengar doesn't faint to sand because of Citrus. The important part about this is I have to Destiny Bond on turn 1. I guess Dawn Fan could miss Stone Edge. I'll worry about that for next turn. I probably would have had to use Substitute then. So I think we'll switch teams now. Go on to the Typhlosion Blastoise team. I'm thinking about getting rid of this Medicham. It's been disappointing. I quite like the aesthetics of going with a starter team, which would be Typhlosion, Blastoise, Infernape. I might run that. In fact, do I have this? Do I have Infernape in the PC? Like, what if I just ran with this today? easier to just stick with the team I think I'll stick with the carrot team I have to do a lot of um, match skipping because of the metachan being unreliable or difficult to plan for um, then I'll change it next time let me just check that it's right on the overlay Typhlosion Blastoise metachan This is a much more conventional team. <laughs> so we're basically hoping to see no water types. That's the main concern. Raygon is okay. Quick Claw, not great. This is Earthswing Light. Wait, is Porygon? Porygon is, is a 21 IV trainer. I didn't notice on Porygon. That was stupid. Should have been obvious from the speed start of Porygon. Which means this last Pokemon is also a set 4.
Porygon doesn't get the special attack boost, which is good. It's going to be difficult to plan around Quick Claw. When I first saw Porygon, I wanted to do Choice Specs Eruption, but I might have to equip Choice Specs on both now. And Claydo on the back has Relax and Sense, which makes it a little bit dangerous. I can wide lens the Medicham, it's just that Medicham obviously doesn't deal very much damage to Claydo before I get damaged, and it's difficult to be damaged. I wish there was a reliable way to deal with Ursaring, but there isn't. I guess there is. I guess I could focus Sash both Pokemon. And then I can Flamethrower and Brine. And they never both faint. But I should be prepared for a scenario where one of them does faint through Focus Sash because Porygon 2 targets as well. Also, just giving Porygon 2 a chance to move at all with Tri Attackers. Not ideal. Another option. Yeah. I mean, everything is going to faint to a crit return. I might have to skip this. It's a combination of Quick Claw and Lax of Lax and Sense. Alongside a lead Pokemon and Porygon that is too dangerous to give a move to. Gonna follow my gut and just skip. It's possible to play this match out. And I believe it's probably possible to have that match. Have that match be sort of a 95% win. I just don't believe in going much higher than that. And also if I buy a load of items and level things down. Like if I was going to play that match out, what I would want to do is level down Porygon and go for a KO on Porygon on turn one with Flamethrower and Brine. That, that would be a level 45 Porygon. Basically let Earthring hit me. Whatever gets hit by Earthring then protects. Maybe that would have worked. It's too late now. It's another set four. 21 IV. Her cross is completely fine. There's only one thing which scares me about this match which is the lax and sense on frost ass i'm probably going to wide lens eruption that and i can cover it as well with blastoise it'll be a single target water spout that would hit um frost ass if frost ass did avoid eruption and a max power single target water spout would take out frost ass without any down damage modifiers that's a very good backup plan importantly Heracross always faints. And Mime in the back is a bit annoying with its high speed death. Boslas can't use Blizzard, it has to Shadow Ball or Hail. And I can deal with both of those. Even a Shadow Ball crit into Typhlosion, I can deal with it. 
Mr. Mime is too slow to really work. What I can do if I'm worried, I can I can focus sash the Medicham. That's often quite a useful item anyway. I don't like boosting the level of mine though. I like mine being at a point where I can easily just take it out. Yeah, I'm only going to raise a level of her across. And just in case the miss happens on Frostlass, I'm going to figure Sash. Frostlass might deactivate this with Hail, but I think if Frostlass uses Hail, I'm always killing Mr. Mime on turn two. Or at least Mr. Mime will be so low that I can fake it out. That's true. <laughs> A lot of the Gen 1 designs don't age very well. It's weird because they made Tauros male only and Kang female only, but they didn't do the same with Mr. Mine. I like saving the PP on eruption. But I think I have to water spout it. Ah, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll let it get an attack off. It did just faint. I think Swampert is manageable if I can spec Blastoise or if Typhlosion can. Typhlosion and Blastoise can KO the partner. Otherwise, Swampert's a problem. It's Rindo Berry, that's a problem. I can Choice Scarf Blastoise, but. It's the window berry. Swamp Up's gonna survive hidden power from Typhlosion. I guess Typhlosion could protect on turn one. Let's see. So Swamp Up will always because it's got Aquatail and Earthquake, but Earthquake hits Inferno, it's always going to use Aquatail against my Typhlosion on turn one. So I think I just Choice Scarf, take out Inferno, and I also take out Doug Trio, and then on turn two, Typhlosion gets to take out Swampert. So I think it's quite easy, I just have to outspeed the Inferno with Blastoise. We 
good part about that plan too is that I think I can raise everything to level up. Because I'm hitting Swamper with a single target water spout twice. Yeah, everything can be leveled up. Which gives me a lot of points back for the Choice Scarf. Blastoise gets Choice Scarf so much that I do wonder if I should be modest instead of timid. Because I, when I was team building I liked the flexibility of timid. But it is true that the modest power would help. This might take out Swampert actually. No, not quite. It's quite rare to get 50 CP in doubles for a single game. Who's a white herb? Isn't that Typhlosion 2? Typhlosion 4 and Charizard 2 are both white herb, I think. It doesn't matter though, because they both faint. So I don't actually need to check which one it is. Oh, it's a set. It's a 21 IV set for trainer anyway, so it's definitely Typhlosion. Hypno survives. It's true that Hypno survives. It doesn't do anything though. I'll have to eruption to make sure Typhlosion faints. I'm tempted to level up Hypno, since it's going to survive anyway, so I might as well take it out at 55 instead of 50. Actually, it might not survive. It might, If I'm willing to commit the PP again, it might not survive. One second.
This is a really easy game. I'm running low on water spouts, but not that low. And I can flamethrower, definitely. Focus Band could activate, actually. Focus Band into Sunny Day would have been interesting. I would still win, though, because of Fake Out. Another 50. Classic set two trainer. I can actually ice beam Jolteon, and then eruption will take out. Uh, no, I don't think it would actually. I might have. To, uh, I'm gonna have to water spout then. Yeah, water spout eruption. And I think I'm gonna have to water spout eruption to Rose Raid too if I wanted to be 55. I could risk just using Eruption, maybe. Because it's not going to do much damage if it does move. <laughs> I can definitely not heal the PP. But I must do it next game. This is the last water spout. make a mental note that the water spout is at zero uses. Collector maybe? Water absorb lacks and sense. Might be a sailor. Or a black belt or a battle girl. I'm not sure Typhlosion picks up that kill. Oh, 
What I could do here is protect Typhlosion on turn one and switch. The issue would be that Toxicroak might target Blastoise. How do I take out Polyrath? I need Typhlosion for the Breloom. I could choice specs Typhlosion, I guess. The fact that this thing has lax and senses what's really causing problems. There's a single target choice specs eruption does do a lot. I'm up to half probably. I can cover that with a big water spout or ice beam. Um, but Polyrath is hitting Typhlosion really hard with Waterfall. I guess what I could do is level up Polyrath to make sure it always uses Waterfall and Focus Sash Typhlosion. I'd have to do Ice Beam Toxicroak with Blastoise, that's okay. Um, then on turn 2, Polyrath and Breedoom will both target Typhlosion and I can protect. And then on turn 3, I would take out Breloom. In fact, if I Life or Blastoise, I could take out Breloom on turn 2 with Blastoise as Typhlosion protects. And then Typhlosion can hidden power Polyrath. And then I probably do have to give Medicham some kind of item to survive. And deal with the lax incense, so I might have to do wide lens on Medicham. As long as Typhlosion hits hidden power, I feel like I win. Actually, what I can do is I can have Medicham switch into turn 3 Waterfall. And I can endure with Medicham on turn 4. And then I can go for Reversal. It would be 10% to miss. During all of those turns, so that's turn 3, 4, and 5, Blastoise is using Life Orb Ice Beam. Again, Polyrath has to be level 55, which is the annoying thing. When Typhlosion does come back out, if I miss Reversal, Typhlosion gets to use Protect. 
to buy another turn. I feel like this is the wrong approach. It's quite complicated. Probably better than this is instead of leveling up Polyrath, I could level it down. That's a big shift in how much Ice Beam and Thunder Punch and stuff would do to it. I can still take out Toxicrate on turn one. If Polyrath does crit Typhlosion, No, I think I'd still probably focus Sash to Typhlosion, actually. I was going to say, I, no, I, I feel I'd still focus Sash to Typhlosion. Oh, I could just skip. It's going to be expensive, this game. Blastoise can deal with breeding with Life Orb, let's remembering that. I think I leveled down Blastoise and I focus Sash Typhlosion and I level up Breloom. Actually, maybe I don't even level up Breloom. Like, how do I lose then? It would have to be a 1% Thunder Bunch miss. That would be the only way. And that costs. Do Life Orb is 20, Focus Sash is 10. And level down is 15. I definitely make more points doing this. Also, can I level up the Toxicroak? I can't, can I? It's Fast and Blastoise. Yeah, it's Fast and Blastoise. If I focus sashing Typhlosion, though, I can level up Breloom. sure about that actually if Blastoise only ever uses Ice Beam I should just choice specs though which is gonna happen and if I'm choice specs I can level up the reloom actually So it'd be Specs Ice Beam. I need Focus Sash. And Focus Sash is the best item for Better Gem too. It gives me two chances to hit Thunder Punch. I can level up. Reloom. If I hit this hidden power, that would be a big boost to the battle. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win now. I'm going to target randomly. 